Hi there, my name's Liz Rice. I run the open source engineering team at Aqua Security, where we build tools to help enterprises secure their cloud native deployments. And I'm here with Daniel Patsak. Hi everyone, I'm a software engineer at Aqua, uh, taking care of our open source projects, including Starboard. And today we want to share with you some background on what Starboard is and uh, describe some of the design decisions that we've made as we've been developing it, and then talk a bit about the way we see Starboard developing in the future. So first of all, the, the motivation behind Starboard. Meet our friend, Dave Loper. He uses Kubernetes, and to do so, he uses tools like Kube Control, and perhaps he uses a dashboard like Octon or a, another kind of IDE interface that uses the Kubernetes API to access the cluster and manipulate resources within that cluster. Now, if Dave is also interested in security, today he has to learn to use a variety of different security tools. They all have different interfaces. They generate output in different formats. Maybe some of it is in HTML reports and some is in JSON files. The idea behind Starboard is to bring all these disparate tools into the world of Kubernetes. So we've created the Starboard CLI tool that provides an interface, a familiar Kube control plugin interface that Dave can use to run security tools. And it creates the reports in the form of Kubernetes custom resources that Dave can access using Cube control and the dashboard. So over to Daniel to show us the CLI in action. Uh, right, so I'm going to demonstrate how we can run a Cube Bench as a security tool uh, via the Starboard CLI interface. What I have here is a local kind cluster with uh, four nodes, three worker nodes. And uh, we also have to install Starboard binary. Uh, in here, I'm installing it from the crew index. And we have to initialize uh, Starboard. It's one time command. It is creating all the CRD definitions and uh, service accounts and configuration map. And with that, we could uh, trigger kubebench scanner. Since we have four nodes, uh, we are spawning uh, four Kubernetes jobs, which are scanning and or running benchmarks on each node. Once it's done, we could list the results. So as you can see for each node, uh, we do have um, all the checks run and we can see immediately that there are some failures. For those who are more familiar with the uh, user interfaces or graphical user interfaces, we also developed a Starboard plugin. And this plugin allows us to navigate to the list of nodes, select a particular node, and we contributed a CIS Kubernetes benchmark, which uh, simply shows the same information as you uh, saw in the terminal. So the CLI allows our friend Dave to uh, run security tools manually through Kube Control Starboard. The next step is to automate this using an operator. So we've created a Starboard operator. At the moment, it just runs vulnerability scanning on workload resources. So the operator watches for new pods starting in the Kubernetes cluster, and it runs a vulnerability scanning tool. We have a couple of options already implemented, and, and we'll be talking about that later. Having run the scan job, the operator writes the vulnerability report custom resource. So over to Daniel to show us the operator in action. Yeah, so let's take WordPress as an, a sample application. Uh, what you can see is a deployment descriptor, uh, but this time I'm going to use a octant uh, apply YAML file uh, feature to create this deployment. And now if we switch uh, to the starboard operator namespace, this is where we run, this is the namespace in which we run the operator uh, itself. And in the same namespace, it spawned immediately a scan job. It is annotated, so we could actually figure out which workload it is uh, scanning. 
um, and it's related to the active replica side of the WordPress uh, deployment. If everything is fine, uh, this job is automatically cleaned up and the operator uh, will create a vulnerability report and associate it with this replica set. So we could also go and see what is going on and what is the descriptor of this image. There is an init container. There is a WordPress container. That's actually the command that we are running. And since Octant is automatically refreshing the uh, UI, uh, it has been completed, switching back to the default namespace, WordPress. And here is where we make this vulnerability information available. There is a status card component and uh, the plugin displays uh, the stats. If you want to drill down, drill down, we have the vulnerability tab and here is a list of vulnerability items. Um, the operator will also act on the rolling update event. So if we bump up uh, the version of the deployment to see if the newer version has less critical vulnerabilities. Uh, we will see that in the same way, there is another scan job in the starboard operator namespace. It is using a different set of labels because now the active replica set for the application has changed. Uh, but if everything goes well, uh, we will see the report updated. Uh, in here. For now, it is still um, scanning. And here we are, the latest version has only two critical vulnerabilities. And um, again, we could drill down and see all the details here. Thank you, Daniel. So now you've seen Starboard in action. Let's talk a little bit about some of the design decisions that we've uh, taken while building it. And you've seen how security uh, report information is created and is associated with particular resources. And we're trying to generalize handling different types of security report associated with different types of resources. As you saw, we're using labels on the security related resource to identify which Kubernetes resource it relates to. So we can use label selectors to extract the right security information for a particular Kubernetes resource. But we're also using an owner reference. And the good thing about this is that when the owning resource gets deleted, the associated security resource that owns it also gets deleted. We simply don't have to worry about garbage collection because Kubernetes takes care of it for us. Deciding to use this owner reference approach actually settled a whole other design decision for us. We've been going back and forth on whether it would be useful to maintain historical security reports. And by using this owner reference, we know we're going to be cleaning up security resources when the associated resource is deleted. So we can't hold on to historical information. And actually that makes a lot of sense because Kubernetes isn't intended to hold a historical database of things that have happened in the cluster in the past. So there's no reason why it should hold on to security reports from the past either. There are other options for that, log the information and, and store it elsewhere outside of the cluster. We also had to make a decision about the name we give to each of the security report resources. Initially, we thought of using a UUID because it would definitely be unique, but it's a random string that's meaningless to humans. The alternative would be a deterministic name, but when we were still thinking about historical reports, we worried that it would be more complex. We, we, could, we could solve the problem, but to make those names unique uh, would involve doing something like including a timestamp if we wanted to make it a human readable name. So we initially leant towards the simple solution, which was just to use UUIDs and know that they would be unique. Once we've decided, actually, we're not going to store historical 
reports, there will only ever be one security related uh, custom resource related to a particular resource. The whole naming issue stopped being uh, so complicated. We could use deterministic names because concatenating the resource type and its name gives us a unique ID within the namespace and it's meaningful to humans. But it also had a useful uh, implication in the implementation, right, Daniel? Uh, yes, uh, since we are using the controller runtime uh, li library as part of the starboard operator code base, uh, which is using a pretty advanced uh, Kubernetes client with its own cache, this deterministic names uh, solve the problem of duplicate vulnerability reports that we happen to create from time to time because we were not leveraging this whole caching uh, mechanism. So the, eventually the resource name, like a deterministic name, reads better in the CLI interface, but also improves the reliability and uh, implementation of the operator. When we first spoke with customers about Starboard, something they brought up very quickly was role-based access control. Generally speaking, Dave should only have access to the security information related to the resources that he has access to. So putting those reports in the same namespace as the resources can make our back configuration pretty straightforward. But as you saw, Starboard needs to run jobs and we have to decide what namespace to run those jobs in. And um, we decided to do that in a separate namespace for Starboard for a couple of reasons. First of all, it means Starboard doesn't need permission to run workloads in your application namespaces. And that's better from the point of view of the principle of least privileges. We want to give everything as limited permissions as possible. So Starboard can only create these jobs in its own namespace. The other advantage of this is that when Dave is looking at the applications running in his namespace, it's not cluttered up with the occasional uh, scan jobs that Starboard, the Starboard operator would be automatically creating. Now for the CLI, the scan jobs run in a Starboard namespace and for the operator, they run in whatever namespace you're running the operator in, right? Yes, uh, notice also that uh, not every resource uh, building in Kubernetes is, is scoped to a namespace. Uh, there are nodes. And, for the, and you saw in the demo that we run a kubebench for each node, and then we associate a report with a node. So in this case, uh, we also distinguish uh, between namespace and cluster scoped custom security resources. So vulnerability report would be a namespace report, whereas for a dimensioned kubebench report or kubehunter report is a cluster scoped resource. So we've seen that in general, we're associating a security report with a resource. And when it comes to running workloads, we actually had a few options to consider. Remember that we're trying to make it easy for Dave Loper to find out the security information about his workloads, his running applications. Now, if he runs an unmanaged pod, it's pretty straightforward that the vulnerability report is associated with that unmanaged pod. But if we're talking about deployments, there could be multiple instances of each pod. And if we were to associate vulnerability reports with those pods, we'd have duplication, those reports can actually be pretty large. So it could turn into a practical storage issue to store vulnerability reports at this level. So we decided not to do that. An alternative might be to think about associating the vulnerability report with the deployment. After all, that's the resource that Dave is typically going to be manipulating. But there is a problem with this. There isn't always a single replica set per deployment. And if, we're, if we have multiple replica sets, they may have different images in their pod specs. So we need different vulnerability reports for those images, those different images that they refer to. So 
The conclusion is we need to hold vulnerability reports associated with replica sets. When you come to think of it, unmanaged pods can also be replaced with a pod of the same name, but a different image. So for that reason, we include a label with a hash of the pod spec so that we can tell if the security report for a particular pod is out of date. Even if we're storing these vulnerability reports per replica set, from Dave's point of view, he's probably interested in querying it related to his deployment. So we've made it easy to traverse the hierarchy so that you can make a query at the deployment level and it looks up the vulnerability information from the associated replica set. And uh, over to Daniel to show us the hierarchy. All right, so just to show you uh, the current report that we have in our cluster, uh, we scanned uh, all the nodes with QPench. And as you can see, we set the owner reference for this report to point to a kind uh, worker uh, node. Um, but also you see that it's because of this great Kube control tree plugin, uh, we see the whole hierarchy of objects. It's even more interesting when we display it for the WordPress uh, application. Uh, since we did a rolling update, we have two replica sets. One of them is active, as you can see this ready status here. And we also created a two vulnerability reports, which are linked back to the replica set. And uh, just to show you what we mean by traversing the hierarchy of objects. So remember that even though we don't have the report associated with the deployment object, we do display this information, right? Because we can do programmatically traverse uh, the tree and display all the vulnerability information right in the um, user interface. So we've talked about how we envisage Starboard being extendable and uh, being used to show security reports generated by multiple different tools. Now let's talk a bit about how or what you would need to do if you wanted to add support for a new security tool into Starboard. Oops. Over to you, Daniel. Uh, uh, so here, what you can see is uh, like a quick explanation of how Starboard uh, schedules uh, jobs and uh, how you can contribute or security vendor can contribute with its own vulnerability scanner. Uh, it's not like a plug and play experience yet, but in general, we believe that uh, we, we could support other tools um, out of the box. Like uh, we have this reconciliation loop that is constantly watching uh, deployments or pods that are created. And then Starboard is taking care of scheduling a job, uh, adding all these labels that we explained and eventually persisting the, uh, the report. And here, what we expect from the vendor is to implement a simple interface to provide a pod template spec. This is where uh, as a prerequisite, we expect that your vulnerability scanner is containerized, so you could give us its uh, image and then also build up the command that is used for scanning. In case of 3D, which is the default vulnerability scanner in Starboard, uh, the command is pretty simple. It's like an image reference. And then the uh, 3D output converter, this is a piece of code that is reading a control pod and it's transforming the previous model to the starboard model, right? Which in this case is a vulnerability report. It has its own schema, but we can't know uh, what is the model of the third party tool. So this is, these two bits have to be uh, implemented separately. And if we move to the next slide, you will see a simple interface called vulnerability scanner with those two callbacks. One is get pod template spec. That's the one where you specify what is your image reference and what is the actual command and all the args. And the second method is a callback to parse the stream of logs coming from the pod. Um, if you intend to reuse all the uh, custom security resources that we defined as part of uh, Spar Starboard, you could also uh, swap, for example, Polaris, which is used by default as a config audit uh, tool. Um, so as long as you comply with this uh, schema of config audit uh, report, uh, you could reuse, a, for example, plugin. You don't have to build your own dashboard or something like that. 
Just feed the data with your tool and we will visualize it for you. The same applies for other IDEs uh, for which we don't have plugins now. But since the CRD is a common uh, thing in Kubernetes and uh, since we added uh, additional printer columns, even the default uh, UI for displaying uh, custom resources uh, in Lens allows you to quickly spot that in a given application, you have 91 critical vulnerabilities. Of course, we can wrap it into a plugin, but it's, it's already useful. And also you can see here are all the labels and the naming conventions that we were talking about. So today, Starboard is extensible. It's possible to add support for new security tools. You do need to write some code. Where we would love to get to in the future is the ability to just add new security tool tools through configuration. Imagine that it's really a simple case of saying or telling the operator, I want to watch a certain type of resource. And when there are changes in that resource, I want to call a particular security tool and it will generate uh, custom resources of this particular type. So adding in support for a new type of security tool would be a case of creating a new custom resource definition and adding in the, the definition, the configuration for that new tool. So that's the vision of where we want to get with pluggability. Today, it is a little bit more complicated. You do need to write a bit of code, but this is, this is the ultimate goal. And we would also be very keen to hear feedback on the custom resource definitions that we've created so far. We hope that they're flexible enough to plug in uh, other alternative tools, but uh, we're very open to hearing feedback. The last thing that we wanted to talk about in terms of the future of Starboard is helping Dave Loper ask the question, what are the most security, most important security issues in my cluster? Or what are the most important security issues in the particular namespace I care about? We want to get to a point where we can summarize the most important issues from across these different types of security report and use Starboard to make it very easy for Dave to find out what security issues he really needs to worry about. So if that sounds interesting to you, you can download and, and run Starboard from uh, GitHub. It's also available on the Artifact Hub and the Operator Hub. And we would love for you to get involved. Uh, do come and check out the Starboard repository on GitHub. You can get in touch with us or reach out to us here at the conference. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much. Thank you.